Sullivan, um, lecturer in visual culture and art history at Goldsmiths College London, to uh, Manchester Met's ERI Deleuze Studies website. Uh, here to talk about your book, uh, Art Encounters. <laughs> Well, there's different ways to answer that question. Maybe the best way to answer that question is sort of our idea is contemporary modern art. And for me, um, Deleuze is, if you like, the philosophy of choice for modern and contemporary art. There's something yeah. about Deleuze's philosophy, there's something about his pragmatic philosophy. Um, I mean, it's been said before, and you know, I'll, say it, I'll say it here, but kind of Deleuze is almost like the artist's philosopher. His philosophy is constructive, it's to do with uh, creativity. So it kind of lends itself towards, uh, towards thinking about art. Okay, maybe we could um, go back and address a, uh, the, where it starts right at the beginning of your introduction as a, a kind of springboard mm -hmm. to, uh, to the book. Mm -hmm. So you start with uh, a quote from De Difference and Repetition. That's right. Um, by Deleuze. Something in the world forces us to think. This something is an object not of recognition but of a fundamental encounter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, relating back to uh, art encounters. Mm -hmm. um, an object of an encounter is fundamentally different from an object of recognition. Mm -hmm. With the latter, our knowledges, beliefs, and values are reconfirmed. Mm -hmm. We and the world we inhabit are reconfirmed as that which we already understood our world and ourselves to be. An object of recognition is that precisely representation of something always already in place. Yeah. So. That's a kind of uh, an introductory springboard mm -hmm. or starting block for the mm -hmm. book. Um, mm -hmm. may maybe if you could go over your standpoint on that sure, and, and sure. why that's the, the, the key. Sure. It, is, no, it is a key. I mean, kind of what I, what I do in the introduction then is I go on to kind of talking about different kinds of encounters. I talk about my encounter with Deleuze's philosophy, as I talked about earlier. Um, I talk about my encounter with certain art practices. And I talk about the encounter between Deleuze's philosophy and art. So there's a series of different encounters. But this particular quote, the quote from Difference Repetition, what I do with it, what I'm setting up is kind of what I feel is at stake in a genuine encounter. Now, at stake in a genuine encounter is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a breaking of habit, a breaking of habitual way of being and responding uh, to and in the world, if you like. So um, the bit that you've just read out is uh, I'm, I'm basically saying that kind of um, you know when we when we when we have an encounter we're not we're not faced with something if you like that we already know something that reassures us of our identity uh, that we can we can read easily enough etc cetera, etc cetera. with a genuine encounter what we're faced with is something that kind of brings us up short against ourselves if you like it it, it ruptures something. Um, so for me, this is this is the um, this is obviously what's at stake at art. Uh, you know, uh, the art really, um, I think, its modus operandi is um, that it's an object of an encounter, that it kind of does something different. It's not just more of the same, if you like. Um, and the same, I mean, I'm, throughout the book, I, I go back to this really. I think the same to a certain extent. Um, when we think about the politics of art practice, perhaps we, we don't need to go into that now, but there, there's also something to do with the encounter, something to do with a kind of a rupturing moment. Now, the other thing to say about that that I think is important, as soon as you, you picked up on it, is that I, I think that this kind of moment, the encounter, um, and this is crucial to the book, has, has, has two moments within it. Uh, the first is, as I mentioned already, a, a rupture, a kind of breaking, a cut. Um, or one can also think about it as a moment of dissent, a, a kind of turning away, um, so one, or a refusal even. Um, that's the, not the first moment, that is a moment in the encounter. The second, though, is a moment of affirmation, of a creativity, a turning towards something else. Now, the book's kind of concerned with the conjunction between these two moments. I mean, you know, for a long time, I kind of was always of the impression that kind of uh, the most important thing is the, the, the affirmation, the moment of kind of saying yes to something. Um, but um, 
well, the, the book tries to kind of track through that these coup moments are, are really the same. In, if you like, in breaking one world, you always create a new world. In turning away from one thing, you turn towards something else. Uh, and I suppose um, I'm kind of interested in that. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm interested in. And what I'm basically interested in is kind of um, where is the new, you know, where, what, what, are, what, what is possible, where are the new kinds of worlds, if you like. Um, but also attendant on that is um, why all this and why not something else, you know, how do we kind of break with the kind of the world as it is. Um, and both of these things seem crucial. And, and, and of course, you know, not to, go, to really push too far, but of course, they encounter as, you know, crucial for Deleuze as well. I mean, kind of, you know, so he's encountered with different philosophers that kind of, have, you know, allowed him to think in different ways. And, or he's, he's, he's encountered with different artists. I mean, you know, writings on Proust, um, when he talks about kind of love, uh, the encounter of love, incredible writing. So in, in a sense, you know, the encounter's also um, a crucial concept, you know, for Deleuze as, as far as I'm concerned. So how would this kind of key into, um, I mean, it, it was mainly in Britain at the time, in the early 90s, to take it very yeah, sure, sure. right up to uh, more contemporary stuff. Sure. Um, how would that fit in terms of, as it was termed, shock car or, yeah, or sure. grit art, and yeah. that kind of, because there was that, that big shock encounter. Yeah, there was, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, I mean, it, obviously, it, it was something that was happening in Britain at the time, but what, I mean, elsewhere, when you're talking about Paris and things, they were concentrating on kind of, Environmental stuff, a uh, kind of setting up situations, sure. all that kind of stuff. But in sure. Britain at the time, yeah. in the nineties, there was that. Yeah, there was absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. I mean, I don't, I don't talk about the YBAs and that particular kind of sensation stuff. But I think you're absolutely right. I mean, kind of a stake in that art, in the better piece of that art, because I feel, uh, you know, there were better stuff in the week stuff. Or was call it a shock or call it a rupturing moment. I think that that was there, uh, and it was important. I mean, you know, I think it's never just enough to shock. Uh, you know, in a way, the, a piece of shocking art can just kind of, um, although it looks like it has a moment of a break, or it might have a first moment of this break, it's very quickly recuperate. It doesn't kind of go anywhere else. It, it still remains within the cliche or whatever. And, you know, it's like with advertising, for example, TV, it operates through shock, it operates through this kind of stuff. So I think that kind of concomitant moment of the encounter is important. The, you know, what is the creative thing that comes over it? The affirmation of something else or another world. But, but no, I think, I think you're right. I think at uh, stake, um, with the YBAs was a kind of moment of, of rupture and stuff. But um, I mean, I suppose, t to be fair to the book, um, the book's not really uh, on... It, the book is, say, for example, on Gerhard Victor, Rob Smithson, and there's a bunch of other artists. Um, the first chapter, which is kind of on expanded art practice, or what's become known as relational aesthetics, from Nicholas Burrow's writing, um, you know, and there's a lot of reference to N55, Superplex, etc. The middle chapter, which is on kind of on like political art practice, there's some stuff about kind of uh, coon transmissions and some stuff about the London Group Bank. So there are art practices in there, but, but really the book's a book of philosophy. I, I mean, I, I suppose I have to be honest about that. It's not really a kind of, you know, and then there's this artist and this artist and this artist and this artist. It's, it's more a kind of an experiment. I say a book of philosophy, it's like an experiment in, in um, bringing philosophy together with certain specific art practices. So I, I don't really have a role call of artists, if you like. Yeah. Um, although I think a, you know, a, book, a book like that could be written. A book uh, could be written about specific uh, contemporary art practices in relation to Deleuze, but it's not what, really what I was interested in, because I'm, I'm very wary of um, you know, having this bunch of Deleuzean theory, as I, kind of, uh, perhaps I mentioned before, it's a bunch of Deleuzean theory and these art practices, and it, as, a, as another approach, do you know what I mean? It's kind of mm. like, a, here we have the kind of Marxist approach to art, here we have the Lacanian one, here we have a Frankfurt School one, this is semiotics, and here, at the end of the day, after the feminist state, here's the Deleuzean state. And, uh, this for me isn't interesting, this for me is kind of um, the worst kind of thing about academia. Um, so yeah, so in, in a way I'm trying to, trying to avoid it a little bit. Right? Well you kind of almost end up falling into a kind of, um, a handbook to make in Deleuzean right, artwork. That's right. That's right. If you work along those lines. That's right. That's right. That's right. So it is my contention that kind of uh, if we want to talk about Deleuzean artists, which are, you know I, I, I think is nonsensical really, but if we if we want to talk about kind of uh, which artists do their practice in the spirit of Deleuze, well you know every artist. Do you know what I mean? Because kind of every artist is involved in creating something new in the world, and this is what's at stake in. in Deleuze's kind of philosophy, kind of uh, to produce something new, a new combination, a new kind of assemblage. 
So we've talked a lot about the layers sure. and how uh, the layers and the art kind of fit together, but the book's a lot wider than that, isn't it? Sure, it talks it about uh, Guattari yeah. and, and how that kind of fits into it. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's often kind of pushed aside. It is, it's, often, it's often, I mean, you know, it's often relegated, but there are various commentaries people write on Deleuze that are kind of not quite interested in kind of extracting Deleuze from the mix. Doing, sorry, I mean, for myself, though, uh, collaboration is a collaboration, and it's I think Deleuze and Guattari's writings are interested in, and what Guattari brings to Deleuze's own kind of call to conceptual maneuvers. And for me, Guattari's interested in radical politics, he's interested in you know, ecological questions, uh, questions to do with the production of subjectivity. These are the kind of more pragmatic things I think he brings to Deleuze. So, so the book actually focuses uh, quite a bit on Guattari's solo writings, particularly with Chaos Moses, and on, um, yeah, its relation to art practice again. Another thing to say about that is that there are other characters in the book. I mean, the book is about Deleuze and Guattari, but also quite a lot about Jean-Francois Lyotard, a little bit about Georges Bataille. But also, there's a reading of certain precursors of Deleuze, so kind of um, Spinoza's, um, is, you know, there's quite a presence there, and that works as well. The book's kind of almost like, uh, one way of thinking about the organisation of the book is that it's composed of, um, I mean, I know it's a Deleuzean thing to say, but of different speeds. The, the first couple of chapters, the, the first chapter, which is on kind of rhizomatics, excellent practices, machines, if you like, um, is kind of very polemical. It's almost like position statement, almost like manifesto, like uh, about expanded practices, relational aesthetics. The second chapter on affect, again, is um, written against the kind of backdrop of kind of Frankfurt School, particularly Theodore Adorno, and a certain kind of deconstructive tendency in art theory. Then things change again in the middle chapter, which is about politics, about Quattari's production of subjectivity, about notions of, a, of the minor in Deleuze's minor literature, uh, change speed again, and then the last two chapters on Smithson and on, on Richter change again. So, yeah, it, it, you're certainly not dropped into it. You're, um, you're, you're into, it's like five pieces of writing, uh, five different thought experiments, if you like. That's, that's really how it operates. And certainly none of them are pure Deleuze. They always involve Deleuze in combination either with an artist or an artist writing, or in combination with certain other allies, or in relation to certain precursors. It's quite interesting the, the, the fact that you use the word manifesto, because mm -hmm. that kind of first section, mm -hmm. and that the whole kind of way that, that relates to artwork, and that sure, kind of sure. manifesto of the way that things are going to work, and, sure, and sure. that outline. Sure, sure. So it, I think that's quite an interesting kind of, of way to look at the book in, yeah. in terms of that progression of a movement. Or, mm, or that kind of thing. Mm, mm, How would you feel? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the I mean, there's certainly. Um, I mean, I'm interested in manifestos. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm interested in manifestos in modernity. You know, the way when we read them, they kind of echo forward. You know, uh, and certainly, actually, the, the last uh, the book's got three beginnings and three endings, and the, the the third of the three endings is a piece of fiction I've written, a manifesto, a manifesto for future practice. It's called Man Baroque Manifesto for Plastique Fantastique, and. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I am interested in that kind of speed and tone of writing. Um, and certainly the stuff in the middle about the Red Army faction um, that, I, that I do is related to kind of, to manifestos and, and radical practices. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that is, uh, I mean, the, if you like, the book isn't just uh, a kind of commentary on art practice, commentary on Deleuze, it does have these kind of moments of, you know, manifestos and stuff. In there. So... Um, future projects. Where, where yeah. to now? I yeah. mean, it yeah. seems like a a very large project that you've yeah. achieved already. Sure, and sure, sure. Where does it? it yeah. Is the ne next kind of step yeah. something related? Is it yeah, a, a is. kind of journey? Yeah, it well, it's, it's, it's. I mean, you know, there's a number of things. I mean, partly, um, you know, that book's finished now. But um, what's led on from that is. Uh, Doing a joint work with a guy called um, Stephen Zapka and the Deleuze, and the guy's written on Deleuze and art. And we're doing a, a joint publication, collection of essays on the problem of the contemporary and the new. Um, so that's um, something that we're kind of hoping to get together. But uh, my, own, my own project is actually moving a little bit away from art uh, towards this notion that Guattari talks about the production of subjectivity. How do we produce ourselves anew in the world? How do we creatively? Like construct ourselves. And Guattari is very, very tuned to this. For someone like Guattari, subjectivity is never just saying I. You have to consider it through discourse, through text, through the symbolic kind of thing. But it's very much a kind of material practice. So Guattari will be useful there. Uh, a guy that was uh, influential on Guattari called Francisco Verola. Um, we'll be looking at his, his work and a, and a few others. And I'll 
yeah, try and do something that kind of uh, attends to this notion of how we produce ourselves in the world. Those are the two things, but the, you know, just to say that also what comes off the back of the book is, um, you know, art practice. I mean, I, I've started doing a bit of art practice, and in a way, I'd like to do more of that. I mean, I'd like to kind of uh, have the more scholarly, scholarly work as one aspect, um, but actually kind of, you know, try thinking through materials a little bit, if you like, kind of, you know, thinking through matter, try, try doing something else there. Um, so a number of different projects. Busy man. Yeah, busy man, busy man, busy man. <laughs>